Hello ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all having a fantastic day today and welcome back to another Jurassic World video. In today's video, we'll be discussing the entirety of hybrid dinosaurs from the Jurassic franchise and whether or not they will be returning in future movies or shows. So if you're excited for that, be sure to press that subscribe button for more Jurassic World content and don't forget to also like the video if you so happen to enjoy at any given moment throughout this video. Our like goal for today is a total of 2,000 likes, so let's see if we can hit just that. There will be a secret message to comment at the end of the video as well to let me know that you made it so far, so make sure you're on the lookout for that. But in the meantime, let's discuss whether or not we'll see hybrids back again in the Jurassic franchise. Love them or hate them, hybrid dinosaurs are a part of the Jurassic saga and a lot of the Jurassic World segment of this outstanding saga. They were first tested and played around with within the 1990s, in which Dr. Wu's first hybrid specimen was made fusing two sets of plant life together. After this, many amalgamations were made in the late 1990s that ultimately ended up creating the Spinosaurus, Corythosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and more non-reported dinosaurs on Isla Sauna. This period is known as the Amalgam Testing. Essentially, this was a secret program that was run by a few InGen employees, Dr. Wu himself, and, as we learnt recently, a number of secret Biosyn employees who worked there undercover during this testing period. This was the first ever time that DNA amongst other dinosaurs was tested and played around with and fused together. Whilst they aren't full-blown hybrids, they are amalgamations of one another, taking only minute DNA or details from one species and then incorporating it into another species' DNA. The Spinosaurus, while some may think it's a hybrid, is simply an amalgamation. Dr. Wu and the Biosyn workers worked on this dinosaur as Project Regenesis. After this, the opening of Jurassic World was mainly focused on. Jurassic World opened up in 2005, with capture teams and construction workers working on the park from the years of 2002 to 2005. After this, the dinosaur species in the park were enough for Maserani to be making enough money to keep the park up and running and functioning, whilst also being profitable. That was until somewhere between the years of 2008 and 2009, where Simon Masrani gave Dr. Wu the go-ahead to attempt to create a hybrid dinosaur. This leads us into the year of 2009, where the first ever genetically modified hybrid dinosaur was successfully made. This hybrid dinosaur contained the DNA of the Tyrannosaurus rex, Velociraptor, Spinosaurus, Monolophosaurus and Carnotaurus as the main species fused amongst each other. And so, in the early to mid-2009 era, the Scorpius Rex was born, the first ever successful hybrid dinosaur and Dr. Wu's first ever hybrid dinosaur as well. Now, this hybrid dinosaur was successful in the respect that it was made and was living and breathing. However, with its extremely fast growth rate came with some, well, minor complications, shall we say. This creature ended up being so incredibly erratic and disturbing that it was ordered by Simon Masrani to be destroyed. It was essentially unsafe to be kept alive. Dr. Wu, being proud of his creation, chose to disobey these orders, and such, he forced the Scorpius Rex to be put into an induced coma, and then it was placed into cryogenic freeze in his private quarters. The Scorpius Rex was then later released accidentally in the year of 2016, where it caused havoc to the ecosystem of Isla Nublar, and also asexually reproduced an identical copy of itself. Both versions of the Scorpius Rex met their demise when the original Jurassic Park Visitor Center fell on top of them, killing them instantly. Moving into the year of 2012, the birth of two Indominus Rexes were made, when suddenly one of them, being the female, decided to eat and kill her sibling, leaving her the sole survivor. Because of her antics in the earlier stages of her life, she was forced to be kept inside a small holding pen before being released into her enclosure that we all saw in Jurassic World. She never met anyone, nor anything, besides that specific crane that fed her with food. This later caused her to strategically break out of her enclosure after having years to learn and contemplate her own existence. Then, chaos pursued as the events of Jurassic World and Camp Cretaceous Season 1 unfolded. 
The next hybrid that appears on the timeline is the cute and cuddly Spinoceratopses of Angel and Rebel. These two hybrid dinosaurs were the combination of Spinosaurus and Sinoceratops. The Spinosaurus coming from Isla Sauna and a DNA sample of the Sinoceratops from Isla Nublar. It is unknown so far what happened to these dinosaurs after the events of 2016 on Manticorp Island. Soon after, the Indoraptor was then born in 2017, taking the DNA from the Indominus Rex and also Velociraptor DNA. This creature broke out from Lockwood's Manor in 2018 and caused the events of 2018's Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So, in total, there were four species of hybrids in this saga, in order of birth, Scorpius Rex, Indominus Rex, Spinoceratops, and the Indoraptor. Two of each of these creatures were made, meaning that the world of Jurassic had a total of eight hybrid dinosaurs during the 2000s. Meaning that the world of Jurassic had a total of eight hybrid dinosaurs. But what if we had more? What if more hybrid dinosaurs are on the way? What if we could bring them back? Okay, yeah, that was a prehistoric park reference right there. <laughs> but anyways, what if hybrids were to come back to the Jurassic franchise somehow? We had a good run with hybrids in this franchise, and in Dominion, it was confirmed way back in 2019 that we would not see any hybrids in Jurassic World Dominion. However, we did see amalgamations with the Atrociraptors, who have partial Velociraptor DNA from the Isla Sauna tribes. But once we take one look at Dominion and Fallen Kingdom, it is clear that dinosaur DNA has been shipped across the globe, and that many people will have access to these dinosaurs. We also see this in Dino Tracker, where the dinosaurs such as Sticky Moloch are now found across the opposite side of the globe from Isla Nublar and California. Not only that, but we see that new DNA is also being discovered within the recent additions of dinosaurs and creatures such as Dimetrodon, Quetzalcoatlus, Therizinosaurus, and Morris Intrepidus, as well as many, many more. So, eventually, DNA is going to get across the globe and into the wrong person's hands in this new Jurassic world. Recently, we also found out that the Indoraptor's body was discovered inside the Lockwood Manor, and thus means that news got around and people are now aware of the hybrid dinosaurs that were made. Not to mention that the Indominus Rex's breakout and the events of Jurassic World were reported on live TV and broadcasted for the whole world to see. So many people are aware of the events that unfolded with a hybrid dinosaur called the Indominus Rex, and potentially even the Indoraptor. We have already seen that other companies and people are creating hybrids within this franchise, with Manticorp who created the Spinoceratopses from just only two DNA samples. So, why can't more people? Logically speaking, the way forward for Jurassic is to tell stories of multiple different people and multiple different dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are on the mainland, and the genetic sequencing has now spread across the globe. Is it really out of the realms of possibility that we could see some random new company or individual create dinosaurs that are hybrids and sell them across the world as well? Dinosaurs, they're well enough, but I don't doubt that there will be someone else out there with the intentions of creating another hybrid dinosaur. Stories after the events of Jurassic World Dominion are almost limitless, where loads and loads of stories can now be told. One of which will most likely end up being about a hybrid once again. Now, I'm not saying that the new major story that will take place soon will solely be focused on hybrids. I'm just saying that eventually it seems practical and logical to revisit hybrid dinosaurs, as it is expected with loads of people having their hands on this newfound science that hybrids will be made. Dinosaurs still live amongst us in this world, and that was never settled nor sorted and now it's something that the people of this movie universe are going to have to cope with in the meantime before a viable solution is found. The world of Jurassic has just gotten to the good part, and now that the Jurassic saga has a set endpoint with Dominion, we can now look forward to the new saga of the Jurassic franchise starting soon. There's so many new and wonderful directions that these new stories can go in, and I really do hope that Universal pull through with the potential that this franchise has. So far, we're aware of a new TV series and a movie currently in planned development that will hopefully be announced in 2023 during the events of JP30 that will hopefully be taking place in June. 
And with this announcement, hopefully that means that we can begin to wonder and speculate about the future of this franchise much, much more and get excited for much more from it. As for hybrids, overall, I don't think that we have seen the last of them quite yet, and I do believe that eventually we will see the return of these creatures. Besides, it's only logical considering that, in the wise words of Ian Malcolm, genetic power has been unleashed. The good thing about hybrids is that it can introduce new species into the Jurassic franchise, and not only that, we will also be getting to see successful and failed hybrid projects from these creatures. Just because somebody has the means and the power to create a hybrid doesn't mean that they can perfect it. I won't even be surprised if we were to get a really odd looking creature along the lines that can be considered an abomination and eventually has the company shut down after being investigated. So yes, I do believe that we will eventually see Jurassic hybrids returning in the future. But what about you guys? Did you like the introduction of hybrids in the Jurassic franchise in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and Camp Cretaceous Seasons 3 to 4, or would you have preferred them to stay true to the real life counterparts? Would you be interested in seeing hybrids again in the franchise? And if so, what direction would you like them to take with this new era of Jurassic starting soon? Be sure to comment down the word Indo if you made it this far into the video, and let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below. This has been quite an eventful video discussing a topic where some people adore and love these hybrids and some people absolutely despise these hybrids with all of their heart. Personally, I didn't mind them too much, but the Scorpius Rex was simply outstanding and I would love to have seen this formidable odd looking being in a live action version of movies and potentially shows very very soon. Be sure to let me know your favourite hybrid in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed so we can hit today's target and subscribe if you're new and want that extra bit of Jurassic content here on YouTube. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Hello, hi, you, did you enjoy the video? Just a little reminder to press that like button and also subscribe. I just want to thank my Patreons for this month on screen right here as giving me that little extra support really does go a long way. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.